Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Arcade Crusade. In today's video, we're going to start the first video in the Twilight Zone restoration series. Uh, so we're just going to start doing the inner cabinet leg brackets, uh, do some things in the back box. We got some locks to put on it, so it's just going to be mainly hardware this episode. And then we'll start doing LEDs and everything else in future episodes, but got it set up right here. Let me angle the camera down. All right, well, we'll get it adjusted. So first things first, open up the coin door, take the lock bar off, and we will just put that to the side for now. Lock that again, and then we will take the glass off and just put this to the side for now. All right. All right, glass is off. So now what I'm gonna do is lift the play field up. Go ahead and slide it forward till it locks in. Uh, actually, I'll need to take the balls out before I do anything. So let me lean this here. And I'm just gonna go from the underneath and hit the up kick coil. Those were the three that I had in the trough. Uh, there might be a few in the gumball machine, we'll see, but we don't need those right now. All right. I think one just came out of the gumball machine, but it's stuck in the trough up there. All right, so no big deal there. Uh, let's just get set up. All right, so we want to get to that bracket right down there. And I believe it's a quarter inch nut driver to get in here, but we will see. Yeah, that looks to be the case. It'll be easier if I open the coin door because then this will be out of the way. Yep, so it looks like it's just eight quarter inch screws here to pull this bracket out. Hopefully this won't be in the way. Guess I'll get the middle two next. So that middle one on the side has a uh, ground strap in it. Let me look at this just to see. This is actually the first game I've had to do this on. Usually people don't strip these things out but it can happen they have a lot of weight on them and people are just careless all right so this middle one here has the braid and the ground strap from the looks like the fliptronics board All right, that is all the screws for that one. Uh, we'll see if this will just pry right out. Yep, there it is. All right, and that's it. 
that is the leg bracket we pulled out. Um, yeah, you can actually see these things are completely stripped out, not to mention dirty. So that's the one. I have new screws for it as well. So I think I'm gonna use the new screws. So one thing to pay attention with, this one, that's interesting. Um, so one thing with Twilight Zone is the original bracket had three holes in it. Um, mine, at least when I got it, were only in the bottom two holes where the actual leg went through. Um, so it's just gonna be the bottom two holes that we, we do here. It's interesting that that's like that. All right, regardless. fits any better. I don't know. Right, bend on that one seems a little bit closer to where we were on the original. All right, so I'm just gonna get a couple screws ready. Um, I ordered these brackets brand new from pinballlife.com. Um, I don't, I think Marcos might sell them as well, but I got them from Pinball Life. They have these screws as well. So I'm just gonna get a screw ready and we'll get this thing snugged up on the first one. Actually, let's go to the bottom ones. set up my phone in here for extra light. That is the first screw. We'll get the other middle one as well. We'll just get it started with our hand. It's actually quicker than I expected, honestly. I'm gonna do this ground one next. So, like I said, middle on this side, it had the ground strap that goes to the, looks to be the start button and the uh, coin door slam switch. That is hooked up to the ground braid. that's snugged up get this one on the side here
kind of going it's kind of hard to get in here with this fliptronics board in the way but i really don't want to have to take it out so all right that's in let me grab the bolts to make sure we're lined up All right, and there's one bolt all the way through. And we'll make sure the bottom is lined up as well. But we should be good. All right, two bolts all the way through. So I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my screws. These ones aren't lining up, you know, perfectly right with the original holes. So I'm just trying to give them a little bit of pressure as I sink them in. There we go. That one caught right away. All right, so now I'm just gonna snug all these up. That's tight, tight. All right, that's fully in. Now that we're tight, let's make sure we're still lined up. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, so that was the first one, not too bad. Um, just the ground strap really that was in our way. Let's see. Let's see if I can get the camera any closer to do this next one. All right guys, I got the camera propped up on a box inside the cabinet, but we're just gonna come at the leg bracket on this side. This one has a ground strap right here on this top screw. Um, but yeah, same as the other side. These are all gonna be the same. Um, just a quarter inch nut driver on here. Might need a smaller nut driver or even a ratchet for those. Yeah, I should be able to get to the top one, no problem, but the other two power boxes in my way and I really don't wanna have to undo it, so. All right, all of those are undone. And now, 
chance I can get this out. And then if I get it started, I can go grab a ratchet. It's just kind of a weird angle here. There. All right, so we were at least able to get it out without grabbing a ratchet, but I know when I put that in, that isn't gonna be the case. So there we go, we got another one pulled out. Bottom two for those. Slide that in, go under the ground strap like we had it. And then we will come in with our screws. All right, so I'll at least get these hand tightened, and then maybe I'll cut it. I mean, you, you guys get the idea after you see a couple of these. Um, it's not like it's absolutely something vital to show. So I find it easiest to line up the center holes first, get them not fully snug, but just get them started and get a little bit of threads going on them and then just uh, go from there. There, that's, that's enough with those on. We can do our ground strap. Same thing, we'll just get that one started. It's grabbing. in a little bit well, at least the one up here can get started maybe I say maybe bend on this one just isn't the right angle that we need it to be. Might be easier to, let me undo this. Try and get the left side lined up first before we put that ground strap in. See if this can move at all. Yeah, see, it's able to move with just the two middle ones in. So, start with these. There we go. My top screw will get started. I'll just kind of push this over a little bit so that I can actually start these. I can get in here with the nut driver. Actually, the angle that it's going in at, I might be able to just use this without having to go get a ratchet. Now, the one thing is with bending this over, we gotta make sure our legs are still straight. All right, so that's in all the way. Screws going through the top one. Let me check the bottom one. Yep. All right, so we're completely lined up. And we will just continue. Um, yeah, it's better that we got those started than where they were at. We'll just get these side ones.
right, get that one started. All right, you just get one more of them started, but. Oops. All right, so now just snug all of these up. snug let's get the whole side that's blocked by the box all right that one's snug Yeah, after you tighten the side ones, the middle ones will actually loosen up a little bit just from getting pulled on both sides. So just go back and tighten all of them when you're done. But yeah, these ones are very tight. Let me check them both with a bolt. All right. through no problem let's check the top one yep through no problem so both of them hooked up ground straps on new ones are ready to go um, yeah that's pretty much it all right so I'm gonna do the back two off camera just because it's, it's gonna be a pain to try to get the camera back there and get a good shot. But it's just the same thing. It's eight screws, quarter inch nut driver, you know, that's it. You just swap them out. Won't have stripped out threads anymore. You won't, you know, your legs won't be basically falling off. So I'm gonna do the back two and then we'll start working on the locks and the rest of the hardware and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, so I just finished up the back two brackets. Uh, there you can see that one put in brand new screws and then same thing with the one down there what i had to do was i slid the play field all the way forward i have it resting on the front of the cabinet and then got in here this back left one real easy to get to this one um, where the power cord comes in it was kind of a pain to get around but it wasn't too bad i ended up getting it so not too bad so now we have the front two and the back two done so once i get some help i can lower the uh 
lower the head box, strap it down, and then get the legs on it and get this thing stood up so we can work on it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So the first thing I want to address with this back box, I already got these finger loose, but um, we have the lock plate for the back glass lock. Um, you'll find, you'll pick up a lot of pinballs and it either won't have this plate or it has no lock. Um, in my case, no lock, but we at least have the plate. And it does use security screws, um, hex head screws with a dot in the center. So I'll have to go get my tool kit to, to fully tighten these down. But uh, I got a brand new lock also from Pinball Life. It is a black one specifically for Bally Williams back boxes. Um, yeah, so basically our lock's gonna go in. Hold up, let me pop these out. All right, so like I said, um, there it is, brand new lock. I'm gonna put our nut on if it'll thread nicely. It's being a pain. So I'm just gonna get this finger tight for now. I'll come back, take a wrench to this and get it tight the way it should be. Um, and then the other piece of this lock is the actual plate itself. So that's gonna go on just like so, and it's gonna screw in. And I'm just gonna keep this loose just in case I need to move this. But basically the idea here is, is Uh, is this a lock? Okay, so this isn't a lock where you can, um, this isn't a lock where you can pull out on both sides, whether it's locked or unlocked. So in this position will be unlocked, which will be off to the side so we can get the back glass off. Um, and then this way will be locked. We can pull the key out. So it's actually the right way, the way I have it set up right now. So I just got to tighten this down with a, um, a wrench and a screwdriver for the end here. And then this can go right back on, and that's it. So. All right, got my screwdriver right here. We'll get that on, and then I'll just work around this. But um, this is just gonna go on the exact same way we took it off, so. Just gonna go up in here and then these screws are actually, they're machine screws, so they go into a plate in there. Um, so yeah, same thing, but that's it for the lock. All right guys, so I went ahead and tightened up the lock on the back box. Uh, now I'm getting the lock for the coin door ready. Um, same thing, it's just gonna slide through. You're gonna get your lock washer on. All right, so we're on there. I'm just gonna come in with my wrench and just tighten this up. All right, so that's fully tightened. Let's see if it, yep, that's good. All right, so now this is gonna go on. The only way this lock pulls out is if it's sideways. So it's just gonna have to go on facing down like this, unlocked. So that way when it is locked, it's the right way. All right, there it is all the way. Fully tightened and our door shuts. So that is it. Um, 
It's kind of got a slight angle on it. I might try, there we go. That took the angle out of the lock and it loosened it up a bit. All right, so now the coin door is closing and we're good to go there. All right, well, my camera died last night, but I ended up getting some help. Um, I had a friend come over and I ended up getting the game on its legs. So we got the cabinet protectors on and the legs on, they're all snugged up. Uh, we got the play field even and we got the bubble set to six and a half degrees, which is this second notch right there. Uh, you want the tip of the bubble to be at the second line. That's six and a half degrees, what's recommended for this game. Um, but basically what I did is we pulled the back box forward, strapped around it, and then we lifted up the front of the game, and then it was on its back, put the front two legs on, dropped it down, lifted up the back, put a, um, like a bar height stool underneath it, and then put the back two legs on. Um, so that was pretty much it. I got the legs on it because I got some help last night and I didn't, you know, my camera died. I didn't have enough time to film it, but you get the idea. Um, the other things that I wanted to do in the back box is I have the 9.2 game ROM to install. Uh, mine is running L4 right now. 9.2 is the last official ROM from Midway. There is a 9.4 home ROM, um, but I'd rather run something official, so I'm going to do 9.2. And then I have a 62256 NVRAM. Um, normally, the common NVRAM is 6264. Now, I checked the RAM in my Twilight Zone, and I'm running a 62256. And if, you, if I, I could put a 6264 in, but I would have to make a jumper change on the board, and I, wasn't, I couldn't find enough documentation for how to make that change on a rotten dog. So, we're sticking with the 62256, uh, rather than messing around with it. Um, let me zoom in for you guys. Spin this. All right, there we go. So the chip with the white label right here, it says L4 on it, that is our game ROM. And then the chip below it is our RAM. Um, since I'm running a rotten dog, my RAM is socketed, uh, meaning it's in a socket, then soldered to the board. Um, on the original Williams WPC CPU boards, that RAM is not socketed. So if you wanted to put this NV RAM in one of those, you would have to pull the board out, desolder the original RAM, put in a socket, then put the NV RAM in. Um, I kind of lucked out having a rotten dog in here, so I don't have to do that. Um, but basically, the way these chips are oriented, there is a... Um, there's an indent right here, and that signifies where pin one is at, so just make sure you pay attention to where that divot's at. Um, you, the new chip has to go in the exact same way. So I'm going to sneak in here, and basically what we're gonna do here, I, I just use a little flathead screwdriver, I don't have a chip puller or, any, or anything, and I just come in here and I try to pry a little bit so I can get my screwdriver underneath and then just get get it pried up a little bit on one side and then come to the other side and it's just gonna be the same thing you just kind of rock the chip slowly back and forth until you um, get it to a point where you can pretty much just lightly pull it out you don't ever yank on these chips you'll bend legs and although we're replacing this, there's always a chance the chip we put in doesn't work. So you don't want to ruin this chip. And um, if, I mean, if you really yank a chip out, you can ruin a socket if you do that. So you do not want to do that. Uh, just gotta get the bottom here and this, this will pull out. All right, so there we go. Let's see if this will refocus. That's our L4 game ROM coming out. Um, let me grab the new game ROM. All right. So 
see if I can get that to focus. There we go. All right, now it's focused. Uh, so you can see this is the 9.2 game ROM. I had this burned from a guy on pin side and our indentation is right there, which was on the right side. So it's gonna go in the same way that the other one came out. And when you do this, just make sure all your pins are lined up. And sometimes you'll have to um, kind of squeeze the pins so they all get started in the holes they're supposed to go into. All right, there we go. We're completely lined up, our divot's in the right spot, and then you're just gonna give it a nice solid push. And the new ROM is in. All right, easy enough. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out the 62256 RAM right here with our NV RAM. Take the NV RAM out of the package. Um, and this NV RAM was bought from, uh, Pin, I think it's Pinny Tech. And he actually includes a socket with it, which we won't need. Um, we just need the RAM itself. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Just pry up a little bit on both sides. And this socket seems a little bit looser than the other one. So this might come out a little bit faster. But yeah, just go back and forth and just kind of rock it. You never want to pull, you never want to yank these things out. But yeah, that came out super easy. So I'm just going to put this to the side down here. Pull our NV RAM out. And we're going to be dealing with the same thing. So there's our NV RAM right there. We got our notch on the top right here. Notch is gonna go on this uh, right side. And again, your sockets have these notches in them. So if you forget, just pay attention to where it is on your um, socket. Right, I'm just making sure I'm in the first pin there, and I am. So we're lined up, just give it a firm push down. And now we got the NV RAM and the new 9.2 ROM in. I'm gonna close this. We'll go ahead and plug the game in and turn it on. Sneak past here. All right, let's just back this up a little bit. Oh, I see what the issue is. Our RAM is fine. Our One of the legs on our ROM actually missed here. So that'll do it. out so yeah um, one of these legs got bent out and it actually missed one of the pins so that will happen so yeah before you put this in I guess I should have made sure my pins were straight because that will happen if you screw it up so let me just put this back in and make sure all my pins go in this time pins are in now and completely lined up 
push our RAM all the way in. All right. Close this up and let's turn it on. All right, now that's the sound of it booting. There we go. So we're booting right up. NVRAM works, the ROM works. I just had the ROM, one of the legs was bent out and it won't boot when that happens. So good thing we caught that before anything bad happened. So I just, um, a lot of WPC games have a mini minimum volume override where you can't put the volume below, I think, eight. Uh, turn that to yes so we can lower it as low as we want it to go. Um, where is it at? If you go to 17 and price, pricing adjustment, you can turn free play on. So now we got free play on. Uh, the only other thing I'm looking for. December 27, 2019, and we can adjust that later, but it's not going to matter. Um, because I put that NVRAM in, it's not going to hold the... Right. Uh, because I put the NVRAM in, it's not going to hold the correct time on the clock on the play field, um, so it's not a big deal if we have the exact time. Now, the other thing I wanted to put on is... plays and matches might be a feature adjustment extra ball percentage okay free ride time is your ball save now I'm gonna put this on seven seconds, um, just so ball save is on. Okay, and then your last free ride, 
Um, this basically is so that you can set ball save on every single ball. So if it's only on ball one, this is something added with the 9.2 ROM. If you have the L4 ROM, you won't have this setting. But basically in Twilight Zone, after ball one, you won't get a ball saver. So I'm gonna put it all the way on ball five, just so that every ball in play has that seven second ball saver. So if you get a dirty feed, you know, right off the slot machine, right into the out hole, you know, your game's not over. Um, so I just wanted to find those. Um, we're on sound revision 9.2. And let's see if it'll start it now. There we go. Game revision 9.2. And sorry, we're on sound revision L2. But now we're on free play. You can see it right there. And if we start a game. See, now since I turned off that mini minimum volume, we can lower that enough to actually see. So one thing I wanted to show you guys, I was messing with this, um, I was messing with this the other day, and if we hold the right flipper and the left flipper, you'll actually notice that the right flipper is a little bit higher than the left flipper. And what causes that is the coil stop for the flipper restricts the range of motion for the flipper. Somebody replaced the left coil stop with the incorrect one. They used one for lady, later Williams games, which is longer than what's supposed to be used on this game. So the left flipper has a shorter range of motion. The right flipper goes a lot further. The left one can barely hold a ball on its flipper. So uh, actually I ordered four flipper rebuilds, uh, well two flipper rebuild kits to rebuild all four flippers on this game because these flippers have never been rebuilt ever since the guy had it. So we are gonna completely rebuild all of these flippers. Um, yeah, let's see if we can actually have a game playing. So I did figure out, see our ball saves on for seven seconds there, and now it's gone. Um, I did figure out there is an issue with the gumball machine. It's actually not the optos, and it's actually not the gumball machine itself. Um, the issue is the popper that pops the ball into the gumball machine. So I'll show you guys in a second. We're going to test and I'll show you it's just not firing at all. And we can actually diag... I'll uh, lift the play field up and we can diagnose that. I just wanted to show you guys it working now with the NVRAM and the new ROM. So actually, hold up, let me uh, let me just burn this ball three and hold on, give me a shoot again. We'll let this ball drain. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the game on and off and let's just make sure our settings uh, let me cancel this with both flippers. All right, so we're just gonna make sure our settings actually saved with the NVRAM. So we'll turn it on, or turn it off. And now we will turn it back on again. And the clock's, clock's resetting. And we're not getting the time and date adjustment. It boots right into free play, so it'll boot right up now. All right, so let me lift the, uh, let me pull the glass for you guys and um, we'll do some diagnostics on the gumball popper and see exactly what's wrong with it. And I'll walk you guys through how to test a, uh, a coil to see if it's bad or not. So I'll pull the glass, lift the play field, and we'll look at that. So before I lift the play field up, I just wanted to go into solenoid test. And what we're gonna go to is we are gonna go to the gumball popper Right now it's on repeat, absolutely nothing's happening. So if we go back, our auto fire kicker, there, that's it on repeat. Solenoid's kicking over and over again. Gumball popper, it's not doing anything. Um, I realized this when I was testing it and I went to load the gumball machine and it never popped. So I went in here and tested it 
and nothing. So got the coin door closed. I popped all three balls out of the trough here. And what I'm going to do is lift up the play field. It's much nicer to do this now that we're not on the ground anymore. We're locked in. And then what I'm going to do is tip it forward. All right, there we go. All right, the gumball popper is mounted on this bracket right here. Um, the ball gets loaded, drops through the trough here, then it gets popped right here. And actually, let me pull this off the tripod so I can show you guys. This coil is missing the wrapping. Um, and that's usually never a good sign. I mean, the coils are fine without them, but we're missing the wrapping right there. So our left wire, the thicker purple wires, this is 70 volts coming straight from the power board. And then this is from the driver part of the power driver board. And this is what communicates with the game to actually tell it to fire the solenoid. Um, so, the easiest way to test a solenoid, you can do it on the board by grounding the tip of the TIP-102 transistor, or you can ground this control side. So I got, an I got an alligator clip ready right here. And what we're gonna do, All right, so I got an alligator clip ready right here. We're just gonna come in right here on this side of the solenoid. And actually it looks like this solenoid's bouncing around. It looks like it's missing its sleeve. But on any working solenoid, we take this alligator clip and we put it to the ground strap right here on the left side of the cabinet. And I'll turn just a little bit ground strap right here on the left side of the cabinet. We ground that, solenoid should fire. We're not getting any fire off that. And I'll do it on another coil just to show you guys. Um, let me think of what's a good one to do it on. Um, I think this one's just a diverter, so we can do it on this one. But I'll hook it up and ground it it fires. No problem, it fires. So that tells us right there that we have a bad solenoid because if it was an issue on the board, um, the solenoid would fire and then you go to ground the tip of the transistor on the driver board and then it wouldn't fire. Then we know the transistor's bad. It's not communicating with the solenoid like it should be. Either there's, well, either there's somewhere we're missing um, the connection or it's actually bad. Uh, I got my multimeter out right here and I'm going to measure the voltage we get here. You see that? Let me shove this back here. Almost see that. All right, there. You guys should be able to see it now. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take your black lead and put your black lead on the ground strap that we are grounding to. And I have this on DC volts and we just want to take this reading. So right here we're getting seven, around 70 volts off the, um, the side from the actual power side of it. And then the driver side of it, zero volts. We're getting absolutely nothing. Now if we come to a good solenoid over here, we're getting 70 and the other side is also 70. So right here, just a quick little voltage test, we know our solenoid is bad. Um, so yeah, that's gonna have to get replaced. And you know, that's a pretty easy thing to be, to be wrong with the gumball machine. The Geneva switch on the gumball machine, there is a switch right here on the left side of the gumball machine. It's actually right here, you can see it there's a switch, it's got a real long leaf to it. My Geneva switch was stuck. Um, I bent the leaf back, adjusted the switch, we're good now. So the Geneva switch is supposed to, on every rotation of the gumball machine, it'll hit, and that way the machine can keep track of every time it's spun to know 
there's three balls in the gumball machine. So I adjusted the Geneva switch and all of my, I did a full gumball test and all the trough sensors are working the way they should be. It's just the gumball popper that is not working. So uh, we're gonna replace that popper, new solenoid, new coil sleeve. Um, we're gonna leave the actual popper itself. I looked at it, it seems fine. Um, but yeah, to get to this, I think we're gonna have to pull this whole bracket off, then take off the coil bracket on this big bracket slide it out because um, we'll have to undo the plastic piece slide it out put the new one in um, wire it back up but that's pretty much it for anything that's actually broken um, i do want to so right there um, that yellow flipper that is the upper mini flipper um, we're going to completely rebuild that um, the green flipper right there that's the other upper flipper we're going to rebuild that and then all the way up there those two blue coils um, we're going to rebuild those as well the coils are all good and strong but we're going to redo the links the end of stroke switches um, they've never been changed before we're going to do the flipper bushings um, so we're just going to give it a full rebuild on here um, yeah i mean that's pretty much it for this episode just some basic diagnostics um, we got the cabinet legs on, we got the cabinet brackets on, um, you know, at least the cabinet's standing up now, which is much better off than we were. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys the parts that we have lined up and what we're going to be doing in future episodes. So, uh, I already showed you guys a little bit in the last episode, but I got full Titan rubbers. It's a full Titan rubber set. I'm doing mainly clear with black flipper rubbers. And then I got a blue post for up top, two blue or two black in the back. And then I bought two purple or two black for the front. I'm gonna see what I like more. And then I bought a light blue shooter tip to match the artwork. So new rubbers. We got brand new uh, clear star posts. They're cheap enough. You might as well just replace them, make them look good. Uh, the lane guide, we got a new yellow one. So new plastics, and then those are just some extra bulb holders. They're always good to have on hand. Uh, we have clippy, cliffies for the slot machine scoop, the rocket switch, and the lane switch. Five new pinballs from Marcos. We have the ceramic ball inside of there. So, uh, actually, I have it pulled out right here. So our ceramic ball is good, uh, but I'm going to replace the uh, steel ones with five new ones. Two flipper rebuild kits from 92 to 93 williams games um, these are the correct coil stops for you'll notice they aren't black like a lot of coil stops on the tip they're they're more of a brass like goldish these are the correct flipper rebuild kits for this game so we're going to rebuild all four flippers we got three brand new flipper bats from Pinball Life and uh, the mini flippers in the mail right now from Marcos. And then we right here, we have a brand new solenoid for the gumball popper, the uh, coil sleeve. And then I ordered both the tip 102 and the tip 36C transistor just in case because sometimes when solenoids go bad, they will take out the transistors on the driver board. Uh, I'm hoping that's not the case. If it is, you know, whatever, it just sucks to have to unhook everything. The driver board's the biggest board in the game, and it sucks to have to unhook everything just to replace a couple transistors. But if that happens, we have them on hand. Um, you know, it's never bad to have tip 102 and tip 36Cs on hand anyway. So that's fine. I was, it was fine to spend the extra, you know, $3 that they were. And then we got a new shooter rod, E-clip spring um, both washers and the shooter rod sleeve and then the um, pinball life doesn't have the brown spring for the twilight zone shooter the um, twilight zone shooter is actually the um, lowest tension shooter in all of pinball and pinball life doesn't carry it but marcos does so uh, that's also in the mail with my order from marcos so we'll be replacing this entire thing. The reason I went ahead and did that is because there's a big chunk taken out of mine. And I actually got a, I don't know if it'll come out. Yeah, it actually comes out pretty well on the camera. I went with translucent blue. Um, I think it's gonna match the artwork pretty nice. So 
and it was like a dollar more than black so why wouldn't i go with translucent blue but i mean that's oh and then the only thing that isn't over here is just bags of leds which you guys don't really care about and then uh, this just came in the mail this is the backboard decal it goes on the, the backboard behind the gumball machine um, I believe that backboard comes off with like five screws, but it basically just continues the artwork that is on by the DMD. And this will go on. And I mean, this is going to look awesome. Let me lower the play field and I'll show you guys a couple other things I was thinking about picking up. Um, all right. Play fields lowered. All right, so like I said, I have LEDs to replace everything. I went with mainly cool white, and um, I got new flashers. I didn't go LED flashers. I just went with incandescent 906s. Now, there's a guy online. He makes a decal for the street lamp, and it says you have now entered the dimension of the twilight zone or now crossed into the twilight zone. Um, he makes a decal for the street lamp and it looks pretty sharp. It matches the star field, which is gonna match back here on our, on our backboard. He makes a decal for this. He makes a decal for this metal diverter. And actually, if you guys see right here, uh, this is a mod I recommend for every Twilight Zone. Put a magnet on this. My game actually came with one, uh, but basically when a steel ball comes in here, it locks it in so you don't get that bounce out issue that happens a lot. Um, but yeah, a guy makes a decal for this he makes a decal for this, and he makes one for this steel ramp here. And the one for the steel ramp has the pyramid on it. And I'm thinking about getting all three decals because, you know, they aren't big mods, and I think it'll just spice up the play field a little bit. So I'm thinking that would be pretty cool to get those. But I'm happy uh, the, the new ROM worked, 9.2. We're up to date with the last one Williams put out from the factory. We got the NV RAM in. Um, so yeah, next episode, we'll start with the gumball popper. We'll repair that. We'll probably do the shooter rod. Um, and then if I feel like getting involved with all four flippers, because that's going to be a pretty long process, we'll do that. Um, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll start cleaning, maybe do some cliffies. But yeah, we, we got to do the flipper rebuild as well while we're there. And then the only thing that I haven't picked up yet for it is the color DMD. And actually, if you get a color DMD, you won't need your high voltage board anymore. And then you can just take this DMD out and put it aside. Um, I haven't picked one up yet because they're like three, 400 bucks. They're expensive. But I think a color DMD is a must for this game. It just makes it look so much cooler than, than it already does. I mean, this is one of the coolest games in pinball, but... Yeah, color DMD, um, I think I'll wait a couple months once I have the money for it. So we might be revisiting the Restore series and putting that in later. But that's really the only, that is the only part. Uh, my glass is good, so I don't need another glass. But that is the only part that I am missing. Um, I have all my parts right here. It's actually not that bad. So, yeah. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh